The Morgyle published a video with the title Celestial Navigation, Plane Trigonometry. He admitted that he knows virtually nothing about celestial navigation. I've never done any celestial navigation and so, and I, I don't claim to be an expert on it, but there are certain principles of celestial navigation that uh, appear to me with my limited knowledge of the topic uh, to be valid. But that doesn't hold him back, giving a lecture on the subject, making one blunder after the other. I pointed out to him seven mistakes he made, which made him answering these points in a 52 minutes long rebuttal video. I'll put a link to both videos in the description, although I don't recommend watching them. One is, as I said, full of blunders, the other one is, is one big rant full of straw men, projections, half-baked insults, flat-out denials and a show-off of a level of Dunning-Kruger as you seldom see. Yet I want to point at one major argument that he doesn't address in his video nor in the reactions in his comment section. That is, the planar trigonometry he's talking about but of which he doesn't know the very first basic principles either. He emphasizes the importance of triangles in celestial navigation and the importance of planar trigonometry. If a sailor were sailing on a flat world, then he would have a right angle, observer, star, GP of the star. He has measured the angle to the star and then what? He doesn't know the distance to the star. He doesn't know the height of the star. And he doesn't know the distance to the GP, that is the distance he is looking for. There is no formula to calculate the distance to the GP of the star, if you don't know at least one side of the triangle. So there is no radius of the circle of equal altitude to draw, no matter which map you, know, you use. Listen how the Morgal tries to wiggle out of this predicament. The only method to calculate your distance to the GP is the 60 Nm per degree zenith angle. This formula, and I'm not sure exactly what he means by Nm, New Mexico, I wish, yeah, I don't know, whatever. Um, Notice that he doesn't understand that Nm stands for nautical mile. That doesn't keep him from providing an explanation of why this formula should work on a flat earth because it's necessary on ball earth. But the thing is, is that's not how light behaves, um, especially not when you're looking at it under the flat earth sort of hypothesis where you have a local sun and uh, a, you know, a local light source that's relatively close, not 93 million miles away. Um, however, the math kind of works out because light is not traveling in straight lines. The, the light is bending around a flat earth with disparate observers who can assume that they're on a ball where light only ever travels in straight lines. And so um, this is a, a huge conundrum that doesn't work on the ball and works perfectly fine on flat Earth. Uh, but let's assume that refraction can make the 60 nautical miles per degree work. Let's assume three observers positioned at 1350, 2700, and 4050 nautical miles from the GP. If the 60 nautical miles were correct, then the middle of the observer would have to look at the star at 45 degrees, because 90 minus 45 equals 45, and 45 times 60 equals 2700. Standard atmospheric refraction, according to Walter Bisling's Earth curve calculator, would bend the light at that distance around 3.8 degrees downward. So, though the observed star would be here, the real position of the star would be here. At 4050 nautical miles, which should require an elevation angle of 22.5 degrees, the observed star will be here. But the real star would be 5.7 degrees lower, here. At 1350 nautical miles, at an elevation angle of 67.5 degrees, the observed star would be here. The star would be in reality 1.9 degrees lower, here. This of course is impossible, 
unless you believe that stars are magical things that have an individual position for every location on Earth. By the way, Morgal shows the Mercator map and when I asked him whether or not that is the map of the flat Earth, he starts this round. Mercator projection is a map of a flat Earth, that's act a map of an Earth that's actually flat, that is assumed to be a globe, so you wrap that flat Earth around a globe like this, and then you take that and splay it out like this and stretch the poles to infinity. So it's a, it's a mistranslation. The Mercator projection, according to me, is a mistranslation of the actual face of the Earth. So the Mercator map is a cylindrical projection of a flat Earth that is assumed to be a globe and he doesn't like it anyway because uh, reasons. Why in the world would you make a flat cylindrical pro projection of the world when the world is flat in the first place, as you think? And why do you publish a picture of two circles of equal altitude on just a Mercator map when you don't trust it? To top it off, this little gem about the formulas in the, new, in the nautical almanac. So number seven, um, you showed the nautical almanac from the nautical almanac site. Did you read it? I actually read a lot of it. I was surprised how much information is in it. Um, and if you did read it, did you understand the formulas on pages seven and eight? And if you did understand them, why didn't you mention that these formulas are only valid on a spherical Earth? Okay, to, uh, no to all those questions. No, I didn't read the formulas. No, I don't understand them. And the rest of them are not applicable. But what I can tell you what that is, is those formulas are needed to transfer actuality on the plane to a hypothetical sphere. Which is why those formulas only work on a sphere, because that's what they're intended to do. My question how to calculate the distance to the GP that I repeated in the comment, comment section, he answers with another question. What a surprise. Before I read another one of your novels, please let me know exactly how many schooners you manually navigated across oceans per year. When I answered none, because I never navigated on a schooner in my life, his reaction, oh, so you're not some passionate celestial navigation expert as you're posturing yourself to be. I never postured myself to be an expert. That is his projection. My reaction, so no answer, as could be expected. And the Morgal, right, no answer, because you have eyes and do not see. Ears, but you do not hear. What would, what would be the point? Please apply rational discernment towards your long-held illogical and debunked core belief systems, which actually fall apart under the least amount of inquiry. Until you do that, you are a lost cause. Good luck and Godspeed. I don't know what he meant with Godspeed, but I do know that, although the subtitle of his video was Planner Trigonometry, he avoids answering my question because he hasn't got the faintest idea how trigonometry works. If you only have the angle of a right triangle, you cannot calculate the length of any of the sides of that triangle. This is the final nail in the coffin of the already long time deceased flat earth movement. And for some reason they bring up that nail themselves, time and time again. <laughs>